Now, the world woke up to terrible news today. 7878, a plane that's, you know, never crashed before, deemed uncrashable, crashed for the first time, extremely tragically. Um, horrifying footages have been sent to me. And so today I want to talk about, you know, the very little information we have about Air India Flight 171, a scheduled flight just this morning from the Indian city of Ahmedabad to London, normally a long haul nine hour flight that ended seconds after takeoff. The plane in question, 7878, beautiful GENX engines, normally deemed undestructible. The registration of this plane that we're talking about is Victor Tango Alpha November Bravo. One of the earlier 787s delivered, it was delivered to Air India 11 years ago into December 2013, but yet this is such a modern, sophisticated airplane. This is not your ATR crashing into a mountain. This is a big ship that just fell out of the skies seconds after takeoff. And while it's very obvious what happened, at exactly 138 local time here in Ahmedabad, the airplane backtracked onto the runway 23 with a so far unconfirmed 242 passengers on board. Now the runway at Ahmedabad is extremely long. We are talking about a runway size of 35 100 meter. Now, as you can see, this is we're using live weather. The le le weather was totally fine. And with the flaps somehow set to a takeoff configuration, the airplane took off. Um, and it didn't fly for very long at all. Now, here we are on runway 2 tree, you know, taking off. We have just kind of reached V1 speed. And this is where a local eyewitness report hearing loud bangs from the outside, with someone here at the airport presuming a possible compressor stall at V1. Now at this very moment, the crew did emit a made a call as well to the tower. We're obviously talking about a plane that right on the takeoff run lost both engines. Why? It is clearly audible. Still, we're talking about this clip here that was shot somehow close to the runway. We don't hear much. We don't hear an engine roaring at full power. And what we see is an airplane going down. And this really confuses me because a dual engine failure on an airplane like this, on the GENX engine, I mean, okay, the 787 is known for engine issues. I mean, you might know this clip here of a Polar 7879 taking off and rejecting takeoff because of engine problems. But the thing is, whatever engine problems the 787 is known for is rather on the Royce Royce engine. Once again, Air India uses the GENX engine, which is so far known as being pretty indestructible. And there you go, engine problem here on the Rolls Royce with the rejected takeoff. Relatively similar situation, I presume. Now, why do I assume that we have a dual engine failure indeed? It's because for once, the 787 should be able to fly just fine on one engine. Look, we've just gotten rid of our right engine. And this is why pilots decide for a V1 speed. V1 speed practically means, okay, we will continue and we will take off even if we have only one engine available. Now, this is what the flight would have looked like if only one engine failed. Obviously, we're yawing heavily to the right, but we're able to keep the airplane in the air and we're able to somehow turn around for landing. And we're able to definitely hear one engine go full power. This clip on the other hand, we don't really hear much at all. And once again, these two GNX engines are rated to go across oceans. They're huge, indestructible, tested against birds. I have flown the 787 on these very same engines. No trouble at all. Now take what I'm about to say with a huge grain of salt here, but another reason why I think this is a dual engine failure is because of what I see right here. Is that not the ram air turbine, which is located just behind the landing gear right here? Now, while it is true that when the ram air turbine comes out, you definitely hear it. it. Sounds almost like a propeller plane now. We don't actually hear that in the video, possibly also because we're quite far away from this thing. Also, this is probably like recorded off of some screen, isn't it? Yes, but you know when the 787 loses both engines? Right there, we've just done that. The Rammer turbine deploys automatically. Now, why does that happen? The Rammer turbine, you know, this little spinning thing provides the airplane with necessary power to stay control of the plane. Now, it doesn't do that here in the flight simulator, but it does that in real life. Now, once again, I, this is only like 
this video isn't good enough to be able to tell that, but I'm thinking of seeing a rammer turbine here. Another reason why I think that this must have been sort of a dual engine failure is because the landing gear is still out. Right now, as we're seeing this video, this airplane is at around, you know, 600 to 800 feet, or at least that is the last altitude we have reported of this airplane as it leaves the runway at 174 knots and 625 feet. Normally at this altitude, the landing gear should already be retracted, or at least in the process of being retracted. Here we don't see that at all. So while the ram air turbine would be able to provide power to put the landing gear up, maybe in the chaos of the situation, the pilots did not think about, you know, raising the landing gear at this point. I hope you understand how almost mind-blowing it is, yes again, on these indestructible engines to have a dual engine failure on takeoff. And that is exactly what the Directorate of General Civil Aviation of India is saying as well. Lost complete power upon takeoff. And something else they suspect is a bird strike in both engines. What a crazy situation. Yes, birds being digested into the engines and then causing a full engine failure has happened before. This seems like a relatively similar situation to the Sully landing where huge geese were ingested at a few thousand feet, but here now upon the runway, even before the airplane takes off. But you know, this is no small A320 with small CFM engines or anything. This is the huge GNX engine. So this is odd how just a few blo flocks of bird can cause so much destruction as it did now here. We've now lost both engines after V1 and we kind of have the same situation. We have taken off now and we're on an airplane that has no more power at all. And this probably is very similar to what happened in real life. The airplane ended up flying a little bit of a right track with the crash site being exactly here, 1.8 kilometers, 1.1 miles behind the runway. The crash location is the BJ Medical UG Student Hostel. And just this image of the tail, the APU sticking out of this very building is very good proof of that. Here are some more pictures of the destructed building with a destructed 787. Here we see the main landing gear. Um, now, obviously, this is the tail of the airplane, whereas where the wing of the airplane impacted, there was, of course, huge amounts of fire adding to the destruction. I mean, look at this huge fireball. Obviously, this airplane was fueled to go nine hours of flying to London. So huge amounts of fuel just igniting and all over the Internet, horrible footage of the crash site is being shared. Now, we do not have a confirmed number of how many people on board perished, how many people survived. That is something that time will tell for sure. But looking at this crash and looking at the fireball, looking at the hostel the airplane crashed into, I don't assume it's a lot. You know, I don't like making these videos at all because it, you know, makes you, you know, publish assumptions and you cannot really be sure at all. All we know so far is we are dealing with dual engine failure. Now, the question is, was this an engine problem or was this an outside world problem with huge birds crashing into these engines? Would that, you know, this size of the airplane would have been literal dinosaurs being ingested? That is something that time will tell. For sure, this is an extremely historic crash. And now the world is eager to know how two engines on a 787 can fail at the same time. Um, just prayers out to the victims. I hope the huge rescue operation is able to save as many people as possible on the ground and on the airplane. And I guess the next few days will bring us a lot more information about how this could have happened. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm sorry I'm not able to give out any more information. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night.